Thanks everybody for coming tonight to the Faculty Mixer at Vanderbilt University. I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you and share my experiences as a computer science professor at Vanderbilt and other universities over the years. I'll also cover the work I've done with other organizations over the past four decades and summarize the accomplishments I've achieved together with many colleagues and collaborators around the world. Over the next 25 minutes or so, I'm gonna tell you more than you ever possibly wanted to know about me. First, I'll summarize my background and motivate why you should care about the topics we're discussing here tonight. Next, I'll talk about some of my research and education contributions, as well as leadership positions I've held at Vanderbilt and beyond. My goal is to help you understand who I am, what I've done over the years, and what I'll be doing next in my career. Hopefully, my experiences will also motivate some of you to consider a career in academia. We'll start with an overview of my background, which is a bit unusual for a computer science professor. I received a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in sociology from the College of William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia in the mid-1980s. As a result of befriending some unique computer science undergrads at the start of my sociology master's program, I discovered that I love to program. Once I obtained my sociology master's degree, I managed to get admitted to the Information and Computer Science Department at the University of California, Irvine, where I received a master's degree and a doctoral degree in computer science in the early to mid-1990s. After receiving all four of these degrees, I became an assistant professor in the computer science department at Washington University in St. Louis, where I got tenured in 1999. I moved back to the University of California, Irvine as an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering in early 2000. I've been a full professor of computer science at Vanderbilt for the past 20 years, where I've served in many different roles that we'll discuss shortly. I've also held many leadership positions in government and industry over the past three decades, that we'll talk about here tonight as well. The key point I wanna make at this stage of my presentation is that my career progression underscores several things. First and foremost, I couldn't have gone from being a sociologist to being a computer scientist without a lot of help from faculty, friends, and mentors along the way. I therefore strongly encourage you to get to know your professors. In particular, do more than just come to class and then show up two years after you graduate asking for a letter of recommendation, which happens with surprising frequency. Instead, get to know your teachers while you're actually here on campus by asking questions in class, coming to office hours, participating actively on discussion forums, and engaging in independent research projects with faculty and their graduate students. Second, my career trajectory is a tribute to the value of a solid liberal arts education, like the one you're getting here at Vanderbilt University. Once you master a broad and deep set of subjects and skills, particularly thinking, writing, and speaking clearly and cogently, you can apply these skills throughout your career, even on topics and domains you never anticipated doing when you began your journey. Finally, something else I'd like to emphasize for those of you who aspire to go on to graduate school. Getting a PhD enabled pretty much everything from the middle of this slide to the right-hand side of this slide to happen. Those opportunities weren't something I anticipated as I was going through my graduate programs. To be honest, there were times when I thought, gee, graduate school is a lot of hard work and I'm not sure if it's ever gonna pay off. In retrospect, however, I'm grateful that I persisted with my graduate studies, since having a PhD opened up many exciting prospects that I never would have had otherwise. I'd now like to start discussing some of my research and teaching contributions, as well as the leadership roles I've held over the past four decades. When I was a PhD student at the University of California, Irvine, and then a faculty member at Washington University in St. Louis from the early 1990s through 1999, I focused my research and teaching on developing and testing software for distributed real-time and embedded systems, also known as DRE systems. Examples of DRE systems are avionics mission computing, anti-lock brakes in automobiles, and missile defense systems, where the right answer delivered too late becomes the wrong answer. In other words, dependably meeting real-time deadlines is crucial to the success of DRE systems. My work on DRE systems began with my PhD dissertation in the early 1990s, which focused on parallel protocol processing platforms. To facilitate my dissertation research, I created the Adaptive Communication Environment, known as ACE, which is a popular open source middleware platform that provides a rich set of reusable wrapper facades and framework components that perform common concurrent and network programming tasks across a range of operating systems. I then leveraged my experience with ACE to lead the development of the ACE Orb, known as DAO, which is a popular open source quality of service enabled middleware platform that allows clients to invoke operations on distributed objects 
without concern for object location, programming language, operating system, communication protocols, and hardware. ACE and DAO were written in millions of lines of C++ code by myself and my research groups at Washington University in St. Louis, the University of California, Irvine, and more recently, Vanderbilt University. They constitute some of the most successful examples of software R&D ever transitioned from academic research to industry, being used by thousands of companies worldwide in many domains, including national defense and homeland security, datacom and telecom, financial services, healthcare, and even online gaming. During the development of ASIN DAO, my students, staff, colleagues, and I codified scores of software patterns that you've applied if you've taken my in-person courses here at Vanderbilt or my massive open online courses on the Coursera platform. You may also have seen my videos on patterns from the famous Gang of Four Design Patterns book if you've taken the intermediate software design course here at Vanderbilt. During the 1990s, I co-edited several books and published a number of widely cited papers in top conferences and journals, which is important as an assistant professor since it indicates to your tenure committee, dean, and provost that your research is having a significant impact. In those early days of my career, being a leader basically involved helping out my research community by serving as a program chair or tutorial chair at professional conferences, as well as reviewing paper submissions on various program committees. One thing to remember if you become an academic is that you start out as an apprentice, in other words, a grad student, and then you become an expert in some field when you get your PhD, at which point you're qualified to become a professor at a research or teaching university. Over time, however, you may also become an advocate, which gives you the opportunity to help shape broader technology investments by universities, industries, and even governments, depending on where you focus your interests and expertise. You'll see this trajectory play out in my career during the next part of my talk, starting at the beginning of the 2000s, when I was a program manager at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA where I led the national research and development effort on software technologies for distributed real-time and embedded systems. During the time frame of 2000 to 2009, I focused largely on raising the level of abstraction that we use to build these DRE systems, which again are software-reliant systems that interact with devices and other entities in the physical world, where timeliness and other stringent quality of service attributes really matter. Historically, Software developers built DRE systems using lower-level programming languages like C and C++ and operating systems like VxWorks and Integrity. Due in part to my research on ACE and DAO, by the early 2000s, DRE systems were increasingly being created using higher-level object-oriented frameworks and component middleware that could run on a wider range of operating systems. However, these technologies by themselves weren't able to handle key quality attributes such as dependability, predictability, scalability, programmability, and maintainability required to support the emergence of enterprise DRE systems, such as total ship computing environments and distributed supervisory control and data acquisition systems. In particular, software technologies had reached a saturation point where developers struggled to apply them to support the increasing scale and complexity of designing and implementing enterprise DRE systems via conventional methods, platforms, and tools. To address these concerns, while at DARPA, I began working closely with researchers here at Vanderbilt's Institute for Software Integrated Systems on topics related to model integrated computing, model-driven engineering, and so-called multifaceted software development techniques, which are often called aspect-oriented design and programming. The focus was not on writing code per se, but instead on writing code that writes code. In other words, we focused on raising the level of abstraction for developing and verifying enterprise DRE systems by using domain-specific and aspect-oriented languages that could then generate code that ran on a range of middleware and operating system platforms. When I wrapped up my stint at DARPA at the end of 2002, I joined the faculty at Vanderbilt University. At that time, my research group focused on multifaceted middleware leveraging and extending what we'd done earlier with our quality of service enabled middleware to improve the modularity and customizability of our ACE and DAO middleware frameworks. In particular, we factored out key cross-cutting concerns such as synchronization, persistence, memory management, and fault tolerance into separate aspects that were then woven together by scripting tools 
to optimize our middleware for different deployment environments and different application requirements. We also did a lot of work at Vanderbilt on model-based analysis, generation, and integration of quality of service middleware by creating an open source tool suite called Cosmic that contained a collection of domain-specific modeling languages and their associated analysis and synthesis tools. These tools were developed using the Institute for Software Integrated Systems generic modeling environment and supported various phases of DRE system development, assembly, deployment, configuration, and quality assurance. During this time frame, we also began work on distributed continuous quality assurance tools and techniques, which were a precursor to the continuous integration and continuous deployment methods and tools applied today in agile software development projects, as well as in popular DevOps and DevSecOps pipelines. We used these distributed continuous quality assurance tools and techniques at Vanderbilt to automate the functional and performance testing of our ASIN DAO middleware frameworks. From 2000 to 2007, my colleagues and I published popular books on pattern-oriented software architectures and the ACE wrapper facades and frameworks. These books, together with hundreds of papers written with my students and collaborators, received over 20,000 citations during this decade and are still widely cited to this day. This time frame is also when I started to take on leadership roles above and beyond just being a computer science professor. As I mentioned earlier, from 2000 to the end of 2002, I took a leave of absence from the University of California, Irvine, and went to Washington, D.C. to work for the U.S. government for three years. During this time, I first became a program manager and deputy office director at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. DARPA is known for spearheading the creation of many information technologies that we've come to know and love over the years by funding groundbreaking applied research at universities, research labs, and defense contractors. At DARPA, I helped create and sustain a $300 million portfolio of embedded software programs that yielded numerous technology transitions and led to the creation of cyber-physical system research initiatives at the National Science Foundation. Later, during the 2001 to the end of 2002 time period, I also served as the co-chair of the Software Design and Productivity Coordinating Group. This group formulated the multi-agency research agenda in software design for the federal government's Networking and Information Technology Research and Development Program, also known as NIDRD. NIDRD is the Collaborative Information Technology Research Coordinator of the major federal science and technology agencies. After I was done with my DARPA stint, I transitioned to Vanderbilt in 2003, where I became the associate chair of what at the time was the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department. We've since split off into two different departments, Electrical and Computer Engineering and Computer Science, which we'll talk about later. Towards the middle and latter parts of the 2000s, I became the chief technology officer for two companies, Prism Technologies and Zircon Computing. Both of these companies had taken the open source ACE and DAO software created by my research groups at Washington University, St. Louis, University of California, Irvine, and Vanderbilt. They essentially provided commercial support for ACE and DAO much the same way that companies like Red Hat or Debian provide commercial support for the open source Linux distribution. My ability to move seamlessly between different domains, institutions, and organizations was once again a testament to the value of the liberal arts education I'd received at the College of William and Mary two decades before. These diverse experiences were also invaluable at giving me a broader and deeper perspective on cutting edge research problems, as well as insights into how these problems can be addressed most effectively via partnerships between government, academia, and industry. This diversity has also informed my teaching over the years, since the courses I've taught combine the tactics, techniques, and procedures from different engineering and computing disciplines in novel and innovative ways. From 2010 to 2019, I once again expanded my research to focus on the engineering of enterprise-scale cyber-physical systems and mobile cloud computing applications. Examples of these types of systems include smart power grids, high-energy physics experiments, and air traffic management, as well as the mobile cloud computing environments that we use every day to connect our smartphones with scalable microservices running in the cloud. My research during that decade focused on providing end-to-end -end quality of service control in wide area networks by the Object Management Group's Data Distribution Service, which is a quality of service enabled publish subscribe middleware standard that's applied extensively in mission and safety critical DRE systems. 
We also analyzed and evaluated distributed ledger technologies, such as blockchains and distributed apps, which we applied to the healthcare and transactive energy domains. In addition, we conducted research on middleware technologies targeted for the industrial internet, which scales up cyber-physical system technologies and applies them in critical infrastructure, such as controlling hydroelectric dams and transportation systems. Also during this decade, I began my foray into massive open online courses, known as MOOCs. In the spring of 2013, I taught Vanderbilt's very first MOOC entitled Pattern-Oriented Software Architecture on the Coursera platform. Over the next decade, we released several other popular Coursera MOOCs and MOOC specializations on mobile cloud computing, Android app development, and scalable microservices that have been taken by hundreds of thousands of learners from all around the world. Despite serving in many leadership roles during the 2010 to 2019 timeframe, my research productivity and impact remained solid, with several hundred publications cited over 17,000 times during that decade. These frequently cited publications reflected the relevance and utility of my research to the broader community and also enhanced Vanderbilt's role in helping to shape future research directions. From 2010 to 2012, I took a sabbatical from Vanderbilt and became the Chief Technology Officer for the Software Engineering Institute, known as the SEI, which is a federally funded research and development center headquartered at Carnegie Mellon University. As the SEI's Chief Technology Officer, I helped formulate their technology strategy for hundreds of millions of dollars of internally and externally funded R&D projects. I also launched the popular SEI blog, which has provided valuable information to software developers industry professionals, policymakers, and anyone interested in the intersection of technology, software engineering, and cybersecurity for over a dozen years. Even after returning to Vanderbilt, I've continued to work with the SEI for the past dozen years to help shape future innovations in complex software-reliant systems for a wide range of challenging and exciting government programs. From 2010 to 2014, I also served on the United States Air Force Scientific Advisory Board, where I helped assess Air Force cyber situational awareness readiness, as well as aircraft sustainment and testing efforts for aging airframes that have operated for decades and are still flying today. When I returned from my sabbatical at the Software Engineering Institute, I resumed my duties as the Associate Chair of the Vanderbilt Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department, where I helped launch our online master's degree program in computer science, which was ranked number one in the country by Fortune Magazine several years ago. Having a strong online presence has exposed many more students to the Vanderbilt brand and the quality of a Vanderbilt computer science education. I began serving as the Associate Provost for Research at Vanderbilt in 2018, where I developed cohesive and sustainable information technology services to advance research and scholarship across Vanderbilt's 10 schools and colleges. During that time, I was also the founding co-director of the Vanderbilt Data Science Institute, helping to establish Vanderbilt as a leader in the data science research and education field. From 2014 to 2018, I had another chance to work closely with industry by serving on the board of directors for an innovative Silicon Valley company that's the world leader in publish-subscribe middleware based on the data distribution service standard. Over the last several years, my research has focused on engineering intelligent systems at scale. There are many examples of these types of systems such as using autonomous or semi-autonomous drones in coordination with human operators. I've worked closely with my colleagues at the Software Engineering Institute on a study designed to catalyze the software engineering community by creating a research and development vision, strategy, and roadmap to engineer the next generation of software-reliant systems. This study was published in November of 2021. One of our key findings was that the current practice of largely manual software development would be replaced by one where the software pipeline consists of humans and AI as trusted collaborators that rapidly evolve systems based on programmer intent. Exactly one year later, in November of 2022, ChatGPT was unleashed on an unsuspecting world, and nothing has been quite the same ever since. As I'm sure you know, ChatGPT is a generative AI large language model, or LLM, that can synthesize new and original content in a conversational manner. Over the past year or so, we've focused on formalizing the emerging discipline of prompt engineering, which involves structured interactions with and programming of large language model-based computational systems to solve complex problems via natural language interfaces. In particular, 
we've been codifying prompt patterns, which express best practices for phrasing interactions with large language models like ChatGPT to maximize extraction accuracy and provide knowledge transfer mechanisms to problem solve with AI models more effectively and accurately. Prompt engineering also allows us to transition from the old school style of manually programming software so we can problem solve at a higher level by focusing on computational tasks without having to write code in traditional languages like Java or C++, but instead use natural language programming guided by prompt patterns. We've also done a lot of work on augmented software engineering to determine how large language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT, Anthropic's Claude, and Google's Gemini can be applied to make software development better, faster, and cheaper. All of the courses I've taught at Vanderbilt during the past year now focus on these topics in one way or another. In addition, we've applied AI technologies in the context of mobile health projects. For example, we developed a mobile app that helps kids with type 1 diabetes better adhere to their treatment protocols. We also created mobile apps to help caregivers and low-income families shop for food for their young children more effectively and prepare healthy recipes that their kids will actually enjoy. Likewise, we've developed an innovative mobile cloud computing platform that addresses the pressing need for personalized, engaging, and scalable solutions to support children's mental health, which is particularly relevant in the post-pandemic world we live in. Something else I've focused on in recent years is honing my digital learning skills. For example, those of you who've taken my courses at Vanderbilt know that I record all my lectures and upload them to my playlists on my YouTube channel. I built a large global community of over 20,000 subscribers who follow along with my lecture material and apply it to their daily work. I'm still publishing many highly cited papers, despite serving in key leadership roles in recent years. Maintaining a high level of scholarship is essential for a successful academic career, particularly in research-oriented universities like Vanderbilt, where scholarly output not only measures individual success, but also contributes to the institution's reputation. Overall, I've published more than 700 papers during the past four decades, which have been cited more than 47,500 times. Needless to say, this level of productivity would not have been possible without significant contributions from my graduate students and colleagues. From 2020 to 2022, I continued serving as Vanderbilt's Associate Provost for Research and Co-Director of the Data Science Institute. I also served as the Director of the Vanderbilt Data Science Minor, which has been quite successful at getting undergraduates excited about computational thinking and problem solving using popular languages like R and Python, as well as generative AI tools like ChatGPT and Gemini. As many of you know, enrollment in our computer science major and minor continue to skyrocket. So in 2022, the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department split into a Computer Science Department and an Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. I've been the Associate Chair of the Computer Science Department since the split and have focused on revamping our undergraduate and graduate curricula so they better meet the needs of our future workforce. I've also continued working closely with the Software Engineering Institute to perform independent technical assessments for various United States defense programs. Recently, I've helped the Software Engineering Institute formulate research and development initiatives focused on responsible and reliable application of generative augmented intelligent models and tools in a range of defense acquisition programs. Most recently, in December of 2023, I was nominated by President Biden to be the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation, which is the office in the Pentagon responsible for leading teams of experts who assess the effectiveness, suitability, survivability, and, when necessary, lethality of defense systems created for our dedicated warfighters. In January of 2024, I had my confirmation hearing, where I testified before the United States Senate Armed Services Committee. And just a few weeks ago in March, I was unanimously confirmed by the entire United States Senate and will be sworn into my new position shortly. Over the course of my career, I've seen my focus evolve from the field of sociology to the forefront of computer science, highlighting the strength of an interdisciplinary education and the profound influence of working alongside mentors, collaborators, and of course, my dozens of immensely talented graduate students. My early academic pursuits, culminating in a master's degree in sociology, unexpectedly led me on a path to become a tenured computer science professor. 
illustrating the enduring value of a liberal arts education, a zest for lifelong learning, and an openness to accept new challenges and responsibilities. The success of my work, especially in developing the widely used open source ASINDAO middleware frameworks, is shared with my many students, staff, colleagues, and sponsors I've had the privilege to work with from all around the globe. With a substantial body of published papers and significant contributions to pattern-oriented software architecture and generative AI, my efforts have helped shape the course of software engineering and AI engineering. My leadership positions in academia, government, and industry underscore my dedication to creating synergistic partnerships conducive to innovation and collaboration. My story is one of shared success, with each achievement a reflection of the collective effort and commitment of those whom I've had the honor to engage throughout this extraordinary journey. I'll leave you with one final slide that provides links to many resources I mentioned in my presentation. Thanks so much again for attending this faculty mixer. I hope you've learned something useful about what it's like to be a computer science professor at Vanderbilt, and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you may have.